I'm not sure if you remember one of my comments on one of your videos. You're getting honest but, on us here, Lori. Because I was, I was going to just get this out of the way just in case there's, you know, a little bit of heat. Because my comment might have come across a little bit heaty. Oh, that was your <laughs> comment, Lori? Oh, that was Lori. No, no. Blow your nose, man. I'm like, this is the way I sound. There's nothing I can do about it. But there are These that. are my comments. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't me. It wasn't me. What are the biggest mistakes that people make when buying a laptop? You know, specifically our people that review watch our channel are like creative professionals right. what are the top mistakes you think uh when making a purchase i think like the biggest mistake for most people is buying more than they need right because like you know they'll see like a new product and you know it'll have this spec and that spec and then they'll get like deep down the rabbit hole and then all of a sudden there'll be like things that the laptop does that they think they need but never use like a great example was like when thunderbolt 3 came out everyone had to have it have it but like you could still technically mm. like use non-thunderbolt to hook up to a monitor and the reason being is because in case they wanted to use like an external gpu but the problem with external gpus is you never get the full performance and most people are not buying external gpus because like the whole uh, package of buying the laptop and that sec second accessory is just way too expensive right you're just better off buying like a gaming laptop i think that's like probably the biggest problem right or thinking they can get everything they want for a very low price right? so what are what are some of the tips you would give to people who would actually you know want to buy a laptop but just you know kind of save themselves for not spending too much this video is sponsored by riverside which is how we have been recording these high quality video podcasts when people are located all around the world riverside is a simple online recording studio that offers local recordings of up to 4k video and 48 kilohertz of uncompressed audio rather than sending your compressed low quality video and audio across the internet for the host to record the video and audio get recorded locally for the host and each of the guests once the recording is finished, it is uploaded directly to the Riverside cloud. But during the call, Riverside is sending the best quality audio and video possible based on each individual's internet connection so that each person experiences a lag-free conversation. But all the while still recording locally so you don't have to worry about compromising on video or audio quality even if the internet connection is bad. Use the built-in Magic Video Creator to create the multi-cam view. It's available on both smartphones and on desktops. We've been using and loving Riverside so much that we asked Riverside if they wanted to sponsor these videos to showcase the awesome software they have built. So check out riverside.fm in the video description below to check out their free trial. Um, it depends, like it, it really comes down to what the person needs, right? Like if you're, you know, uh, a music production artist or you're a developer like the only thing you should be really caring about is the CPU right because uh, most of the you know most of the the processing power comes from the CPU for those types of applications unless you're some sort of like developer who's doing artificial not artificial intelligence but um, AR or VR then obviously you need a better GPU but I think it really comes down to what you're doing right um, if you're some sort of like 3D artist and, you know, then you probably need more focus on the GPU. It, it, like it all depends what your application is doing. So I think the best thing to do is figure out what processes your application uses, like what hardware it uses, and then kind of narrow it down to products that, that really accelerate in those areas. So is it CPU focused? Is it GPU focused? Are you doing both? And you probably need like a gaming laptop or a creator focused laptop. That would be the first step. And then be realistic, right? I mean, everyone has a budget. You know, if you don't have a budget, then it's very easy to pick a good laptop, right? But if you have a budget, you have to figure out what you're giving up, you know? So like if you're a developer who likes to game and you can't afford a high-end gaming laptop, then just get a good Ultrabook with a good CPU and then maybe down the road buy an Xbox or a PlayStation if you can get one, right? So you have to make compromises. So be, be open to that. Um, the third thing I'd probably say is buy, buy when you need the product, right? A lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna wait seven months. I'm gonna wait 14 years to yeah. buy a new laptop because <laughs> this new CPU is coming out and it's gonna basically do all the work for me. Uh, just buy it when you need it, yeah. right? So whether it's today yeah. or tomorrow or a month from now, that's, that's probably the best thing because people dwell on it too much. I love you said two things that I really like there. Don't be afraid to buy two systems and then the, the machine's not gonna do the work for you. I think a yeah, lot of times of people feel like they have to get one machine to do all of their needs. And Absolutely. it just isn't true. Like for me, I have a tower that I do a lot of my editing on. And then I have like a nice thin and light ultra book that just goes with me wherever I go to do just businessy type stuff. 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, that again, that all comes down to to budget too, right? Like, you know, some individuals are better off and they can have like a two machine setup, but you just have to prioritize what's important to you, right? Is it is it work first or is it is it gaming, right? And obviously for most people it's probably work. Yeah. Do you do you reckon for a certain budget it's best to just get one thing? Let's say your budget is two and a half grand, right? Uh, do you reckon for that it's best to just get one, let's say, good tower type of thing or just focus on maybe a higher end laptop or get lower tower and then maybe a lower macbook air or something like that what you reckon is the best purchase around that point yeah i mean for 2500 bucks um if i'm if i'm spending 2500 bucks and okay well first of all if i let's say i'm someone who's just buying something for school right Let's start with that because that's that's a lot of people or even work, just yeah. like regular productivity. Then you can probably get away buying two products for twenty five hundred bucks. Like you don't need hmm. a crazy laptop to, you know, yeah. to bring to school. You just need something with good battery life. Right. The screen doesn't have to be four thousand, you know, refresh rate. It just needs to like be good enough to like, you know, type on and, and have good battery life. So you can get away with yeah. buying two products. But like if you're someone who just wants one device and you're going to school, but you're also doing stuff at school that's more demanding, then I think you're better off just buying one thing, you know, like maybe mm. something like uh, a 14 inch laptop, you know, like a G14, for example, is a great example. You know, they're portable, they're light, but they they have good battery life, but can also be used for more intensive tasks, right? Um, a lot of people can also just build a desktop PC, right? That's another cheap option. You get the best of everything because it's more affordable. And then again, you can go the ultrabook method for something simple when you, you're out of the house. So it just it just depends on the person's situation, but you can do a lot for twenty five hundred bucks. Oh, yeah. for sure, yeah, especially in this day and age. And, and unless it's Canadian, like then you, you can't do anything. Like you're you're buying, <laughs> you're, you're screwed. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned the G fourteen. I just got that in, and I was I actually did an unboxing this morning, yeah. and it's like, oh my word, how do they pack that much just machinery and quality into sixteen to seventeen hundred dollars? It's incredible. It's crazy. Um, no, it's a, I- it's a great so machine. Yeah. One question I have in regards to this biggest mistakes is how do you avoid as a consumer hype? Because as tech reviewer, as a tech reviewer, what I've noticed is I'm less prone to hype now because I see everything on my desk, right? Like right. I don't get as hypey and excited as I used to. How do we get that into the minds of consumers? Well, I think that that I think it's that plus also the fact that like when you're reviewing laptop over laptop over laptop, you just kind of like get insensitive to it, right? It's like being a firefighter and you're <laughs> yeah. seeing, you know, bad things happen. You kind of get insensitive to it over time. Um, but I, I I think for us, it's like it's like big steps, you know, like if it's just like a for example, like you just brought up a good point, 14 inch laptop packing that much power. Like how can you not get excited about it? So you kind of have to express that through your video, right? Uh, yeah. But if it's the same laptop year over year and all they've done was stick a new NVIDIA GPU in it and the CPU is only performing 10% better, then how can you show hype, right? You have to be honest and be like, listen, hold on to your old laptops. You know, this is like a, a tick cycle. It's not a talk. I think, did I get that right? Yeah. So it's not, it's not like a big update from the previous year. So hold on, hold on to it for a couple of years. And then, you know, and, and you have to kind of have to show that, right? Because if you go yeah. through every single video, even if the laptop performs well, then I think you're kind of like, you're, you're over too hyped, right? You have to give, you have to like pull yeah. yourself back and like realize that people are watching these videos and you need to show some sort of, a sort, so, show sort of uh, realism to it, right? Because you want people. Yeah. To understand that like this is a good upgrade or if you have a previous laptop you're only going to see about this much hold on to it for another year you're not going to see that much of a difference or if you're coming from like a really old five-year laptop this is going to be huge right because a lot of people get stuck on oh my god this wasn't a big update from last year this goes specifically with phones like the phone audience hmm. they're like crazy and they're yeah. like, oh my god they're, they're, they didn't change the design it doesn't like you know give me a massage like what, what the hell's going on here <laughs> right and, but they don't understand like Phones are commoditized now. The, the updates every year are small, yeah. but if you compare a phone from like five years ago, all those small iterative updates over that time yeah. is massive. And that's what people are doing. Yeah. They're not, most people don't upgrade their laptops every two years or one year like we do, right? Because we're, we're in the industry. But like yeah. the regular consumers holding onto the laptops for five years. Phone users are holding onto their, their phones for three to four years. These are the normals. So you yeah. have to kind oh. of like scale back and kind of show that. <laughs> 
Sorry, I'm rambling on too much. <laughs> no, you're fine. So in essence, we can help the lack of hype in the consumer. Because yeah. another thing I'm wondering is how, if there's consumer, for instance, like Apple fanboys versus Windows fanboys. Like, right. How do you help that narrative of uh, not producing so much hype in where almost you're feeling like pressured right. as a consumer one way or the other? How yeah. have you found to, that you can help people um, really make a better decision based on facts rather than feelings? I think it's tough because like, let's just take our, our, our personal opinion away from this for a second, okay? As yeah. YouTubers, we're taking these products, we're wiping them down, we're giving these fancy B-roll shots, like, you know, you know, the camera's slowly panning in, you know, the clouds yeah. are opening up. And so no matter what you do or say, right, you're already marketing this product the moment you turn on Good that point. camera, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think sometimes, so one thing you can do is like scale it back a bit and be like, look, this is 20 minutes of me using this laptop. Look at all these fingerprints, right? Um, yes, and then, I talk about that a lot because I yeah. have such oily hands. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, so do I. Like I, I probably touch this for 30 seconds and it's just like I can use, I can make gas out of this now. Like it's, it's disgusting. Right? So, <laughs> but, um, you know, you have to remember that. So right off the bat, you're already marketing, no matter what you say yeah. or, or your opinion is. Um, so that's one way to do it. It's just kind of like, this is 20 minutes. This is what it looks like, or this is what happened with this key, whatever. Like there's ways to do it to kind of balance that. But no matter what you do, you're marketing it. And then I think, you know, the only way you can be truthful is give the facts objectively. And then, you know, every video is going to be biased. It doesn't matter who you are, right? Like if you want an objective yeah. opinion, and I you said this, I know you try, try people really try, hard. but I don't care who you are. You're not giving uh, an objective opinion. There's always bias towards it. Right. And the only yeah. way to like get an objective opinion is just to read a spec sheet. And, uh, yeah, and, and MKBHD terrible. said that. That's not my quote. But um, but yeah, so you have to be as objective, objective as possible. And then you tie in your opinion at the end and you might scale it back and, you know, you know, give give people more realistic answer. Or if the product's really good, you just go with it. Right. It just depends on the product you're, you're reviewing. On that note of honesty, what uh, what laptop does Matthew Monez use? Oh, man. Um, honestly, like I'll be straight up with you. I mostly don't use a laptop. Right. I mean, hey, uh, yeah. Same. I mean, like we have I haven't traveled in like two and a half years, right? Like I used to go to New York yeah. every month for some sort of product launch. You know, there was CES and there was this and that. I didn't go to CES yeah. this year. So I, then I was carrying a laptop. Like, it, you know, for a while it was the Lenovo X1 Extreme. I switched mm -hmm. that out for a MacBook Pro 16. Um, but here at the studio, like I'm using here, like my other room, I did a video on it already. It's like a half Mac, half PC setup, right? Like I have that small Intel Mac, Whoa. which I love. And then there's like a MacBook Pro 16 that I use because the new MacBooks with their M1 Pro chips are amazing for video creators. Yeah. Other stuff. Do you have it on a, a split different. screen or do you have two separate monitors? You said so you have I, a I have a, So I have a, one big monitor and then the Mac as a yep. second monitor beside it, like on a laptop arm. And then the PC, I don't, I like switch over to using a USB switcher whenever I want to do things on the PC, right? Because I don't cool. want to use, I don't want to have my real estate on my screen broken up between two because it's just like, yeah, it takes too much unless away, you have like a right? forty-eight inch screen or something. Yeah, and that's just I'm too gonna, big. I'm it's gonna, way too big. I'm gonna go check that video out soon because I saw the awesome. nook. I saw the nook over there. Is that the twelfth gen nook? That's the twelfth gen nook. Um, but in the video at the time, I think it was the eleventh gen when I did the video. But yeah, the yesterday video that I put out is about the twelfth gen nook. But the mm. setup that I did. Uh, I think it was a couple months ago, was using the 11th gen, but they didn't change the look of the NUC, right? It's the same thing. Okay. And then at home, I don't even have a Mac. Like I use um, a custom built 12th gen desktop PC because I mostly game at home, yeah. right? And then I have a second PC that I use if I ever need to stream. But I do carry like a MacBook Pro 13 in my bag or sometimes it's an iPad. You know, lately it's been this tab because I'm testing it out, but that's kind of yeah. like what's going on with laptops for me at least. How about you cool. guys? Yeah, uh, same for me. Like I, I have a 15 inch... 2015 MacBook Pro that I use for my like day job. Right. Um, and so that's something that I use right now, but that was just given to me. And then I have a Lenovo Yoga 9i that was right. from a brand deal that I yeah. use. Um, but other than that, I'm on uh, desktop. I have a 3900X and a 1660 Super. Right. Um, and then if I were going to purchase a laptop though, I would probably purchase either a Slim 7 from the uh, Lenovo Legion or a G14 or an X13. That would right. probably be where my money would go. Yeah. So here's a big question then, since you use Apple products as well. How about you, Are You use Apple, are you using PC stuff or? 
Um, Look at those uh, well, air headphone thingies. <laughs> this, this is it's it's funny because like whenever I'm on the stream, like doing live stream, I'm using these yeah. because like personally, these are the best headphones I've used comfortably. I've tried lots of different ones, but they kind of I can work with them all day and. Right like put them back and they just work for me it's just awesome and the funny thing is most of the time i'm using these on windows like <laughs> I, I don't think i even get most of the features as i should but my laptop is 2019 macbook pro 13 inch and uh, but my tower editing is lots of different pcs over here i'm more focusing on like pc building for creators and that sort of things on the channel. I want to see where okay. you guys follow this. Um, if you have no choice, right? So it puts a gun to your head. Like you can only use one, right? For the rest of your life. Okay. What would you guys choose? What? Okay. Hold on. What's our, what is our is, budget? Is, is Windows or no, Mac? No, there's no is budget. It like it's just a Windows PC or Mac. Or... It's just PC or oh, Okay. PC. Windows or Mac. Yeah. Windows or Mac. We'll, we'll keep it simple. Historically, I was an Apple user since about 10 years old. I got my first like MacBook unibody the little white one. Um, but then when I started my channel, Apple was not to a place where they could have the performance to edit videos. Right. It was like that 2014, 2017 range where there was just like, they didn't have anything good. Yeah. And so I went to Windows. Now I prefer the Windows format for the custom experience. There's a lot, there's a few things I can't do on Apple that frustrate me that I can easily do on Windows. And so I would probably go windows for okay. the flexibility um okay it's it's a bit difficult because if budget wasn't an option right that puts it in a completely different league i think because <laughs> um at the moment i'm just thinking i'm doing a lot of best bang for buck series and i'm using a lot of best bang for buck stuff um so if i'm moving to mac let's say i'm just imagining this right if i did move to mac like everything's going to cost quite a lot and all of my workflow is worked like on the windows thing and no i'm budget, using remember, no budget okay? no budget it's, yeah you're a million, it's gonna give you a million no dollars you have to choose mac or windows for the rest of your life what's it gonna be yeah i'd go windows i, I to be honest i i think i'm gonna my viewers are gonna be mad but i'd probably choose mac okay just That's because i think in the very highest end when budget is not an option and I think for me at the moment, the most important thing is what, like what I'm buying for my life is things that make my life easier, right? And if right. budget wasn't an option, I think Mac would just offer a little bit of a better plug and play solution for all of the kind of, you know, ecosystem. I'm not sure yeah. if you guys agree. Yeah, I would sure. say like, I slightly agree. However, there's a lot of software that, that isn't offered to Apple that I use daily. But if budget True. wasn't an option, I could just build out an entire Black Magic studio and hook my MacBook Mac products up to it. But that would be like a forty thousand to eighty thousand dollars studio versus hey, hey. running everything off of like three grand. Doot, doot. What's this? You know? Oh, that's the money truck backing up. Yeah, exactly. To your door. <laughs> exactly. What about you, Matt? I would choose Gun. Windows uh, e easily, one hundred percent of the time. Okay. I've mostly been a Windows user because because I game. If I didn't game. Like at all, mm. then I would probably feel more compelled to, to, you know, if this is unlimited and I don't have to worry about it, I'd probably feel more compelled to like just be a Mac user. But I can do anything I want on a PC, right? Like, I don't, like, for yeah. example, like, you know, if we were to use OBS right now, you can technically do it on a Mac, but it's so flaky, right? And, yes. you know, because I'm still like five years old, I, I play a lot of good games, I need a PC. And there's never been an issue where the guy used DaVinci Resolve to edit, so I can edit on anything. I can edit on okay. Linux, technically. Oh, uh, yeah. Right? So, yes. It, I, it just it would make more sense for me to be to be on Windows, but since I'm a you know uh, tech enthusiast or tech reviewer, I have the privilege of being able to use both platforms, and I think it's important too to yeah. use both platforms. And I'm glad you yes. guys are both doing that because I think mm -hmm. it connects you a little bit better when you're when you're speaking on camera about the products you're reviewing. Totally, and I think there's yeah. a lot of practicality. Like my wife is like an Apple fan girl through and through. Like, yeah, I tried it. I have like four th laptops that I've been given to, and I can't give her one. She wants me <laughs> to buy her a new MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, and I'm right. like, babe, I have like so many Windows at my disposal. She's like, I don't care. I want Apple Photos. I love Apple Photos. I yeah. will pay two thousand dollars for Apple Photos. You know, yeah. <laughs> and so it's that user experience that she's looking for. 
Yeah. My wife is completely convinced the otherwise. My my wife is convinced that whenever she opens my MacBook, like there's some kind of personal vendetta of Apple against her because it just never works whenever she <laughs> touches it. <laughs> yeah, my wife doesn't yeah. care. It's like, is it, did you spend money a lot of money on this? I'll take the cheap one. Like that's just her, right? Like she doesn't care. She'll <laughs> use Windows. She'll use you know, like if I gave her an Android phone, she'd use that. She'd get angry for a week and then she'd get used to it and did not want to use anything else yeah. and I have to like force her to switch. Like I just switched her to a MacBook. MacBook Pro not too long ago and it, and it was like a flight yeah. just because I wanted to use wow. like because she's doing a lot of work and she's talking to me all the time I'm like why are you calling me on the phone and taking pictures of your screen right just you do it on the laptop you can share the screen with me or whatever right it's a lot easier so it was, it was easier for you too <laughs> yeah exactly it was easier for me yeah. too right because I'm sitting on a Mac in my office when I'm editing so yeah it just makes more That's sense cool. and I just love the airdrop stuff like it's just easier yes. right especially mm. I take a lot of pictures for social and just airdropping it and just having iMessage on there is easier. And again, like I was just talking about FaceTime for quick calls. So that's There's the convenience niche features. factor. Yeah, of course. But just curious about like, let's say if you put like your personal um, interest aside, like now just thinking you, Matt, as a, as a creator, as a, you know, a little bit of a business owner. Well, not a little bit of a bigger of a business owner. Like if you had to choose Mac or Windows, like which would get better work done for you? Like if you had oh. to choose that way, one way. I don't think I don't think one would like significantly change the way I work, right? Um, I think it comes it's just I think it's small conveniences, like you know, the airdrop stuff and like that yeah. would be easier, but I don't think it I would agree. be like, Oh my god, I can't work on this. Like this is completely <laughs> screwing me over. Get this Windows thing away yeah. from me. No, it wouldn't matter to me, right? Because, like, for example, like, even if I did, don't use AirDrop, right? Like, again, I just literally switched to a Mac as my main computer when the M1 Pro came out. So I was using mm -hmm. a custom-built desktop PC. Uh, the, the one, like, for example, if I'm not using AirDrop, I have, like, an 82 terabyte NAS. So, like, I would just send it to my NAS and already be on there, ready to go since it's all connected, right? So it takes, what, maybe 10 seconds longer to just drag the file over as opposed to, like, it's already on your desktop. So a little better being able to AirDrop, but it's not going to, like, crush the way I work. But I do, those little conveniences do add up over time, right? Like they do improve your yes. your workflow. Like those little, it's like little cuts, right? You know, it does help. But, and also, oh, the one thing I hate about Windows, there's not really a good email app. You know, it's like you use the Gmail browser oh, true. or it's Outlook. Like it's, Outlook is, okay, is, is powerful, but it's not a good looking app, right? It drives me crazy. So that's one yeah. thing I hate. I know it's stupid, but whatever. So this is now something just you personally. You're a YouTuber and then something that, I'd like to kind of categorize something that you have purchased rather than just got in. Something that you thought, do you know what? This is really going to improve how I'm doing things. I just like this or... One thing that I purchased that I think... Uh, it's like a, a purifier for the air, okay? Like my office is very dry, right? So I got a Dyson purifier, okay? Um, and that I love improves, it. It improves the space that I work in. It not, I mean, Canada's, you know, the air is clean here. So like it's not really going to do much for like purifying the air to make it cleaner, but like... The humidity in this office is really dry during the winter time, so that yeah. helps. Right? I breathe better, I talk better. Even though lately my past few videos, it sounds like I'm congested, like beyond belief. But that's kind of just how I sound too, right? <laughs> uh, I get comments all the time: well, "Blow your nose, man!" I'm like, "This is the way I sound. There's nothing I can do about it." But there are some these are my comments. Yeah, <laughs> that's what Lori. Oh, well, that was yes. your comment, Lori. Oh, that was Lori. No, no, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> overrated like some of the things that are like whoa this is way too big of a deal do you know what like people need to dial this down this is this is just okay but people make such a big deal out of this yeah um i think this year so far there's definitely been products like that for sure um i think this year so far i think the new g14 is a little overrated um just mm. because they went in some directions great but they also kind of went few steps back and others okay um, don't 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 move past that why do you think it's overrated so what, what I, okay so they think? gave people what they wanted they gave them a better webcam i mean they get they put a webcam there, there never was a webcam they put a yeah. webcam on the thing right uh, they kept a similar design that people were familiar with they cleaned it up it's all white now instead of having a white top a gray bottom keyboard is the same really great keyboard bigger trackpad so they're, they're they made the proper iterative features but i feel like they went a bit they, they try to cram too much into it, right? So, mm. you know, in my review, I said this thing gets ridiculously hot, right? Like, I, I had the thing shut off on me yeah. when I was pushing the GPU and CPU. Wow. Yeah. And I think it was a bad mistake 
not a bad mistake, but again, like when I'm pushing these things in a video, like this is like, most people are not doing this on a daily basis. So I don't think it's going to shut off yeah. for most people. And, but it does run hot regardless of, of, mm. of like, you know. Did you have the 6,800 regular. or the 67? 68. I mean, a lot of people, I hope okay. you have the 6,700 because. I have the 67. Perfect. Because a lot of people I think are more interested in that one. So okay. just because it's more affordable, like it's, it resembles the same price as the previous model. And yeah. cause they, they increased the price like crazy, right? Cause like the high end version of last year's model was around the 15 or $1,600 mark, right? This year it's 2,500 yep. in some ways, rightfully wow. so. Yeah. And in some ways rightfully so because the GPU is more powerful and it's more high end now. But, um, I think the 6,700 S is going to be the one that most people look at. So it's, it's a good thing you're reviewing cool. it, but I think it's a bit overhyped in that sense that like, okay, all these improvements are great and the performance in gaming is much better, but you're not seeing a big jump in everything else, you know, because they're okay. using that AMD GPU instead of NVIDIA's, right? Because a lot of the apps yeah. that people use like Adobe Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, well, Photoshop's yeah. more CPU, it's not a big deal, but anything more yeah. GPU related, NVIDIA has always offered better performance. So I think that was a step back. So, okay. so yeah, I think Makes it's a sense. bit overrated. Once again, I want to thank Riverside for sponsoring this video. And if you're looking to level up your video podcast, you can actually get a discount using the code Ben and the link in the description below. I love this. So I would hang on here for, for much longer because it's just right. the community yeah. is, is amazing for me. I, we don't get this. So this is just so, yeah. so filling for me. So I appreciate it. Oh, I, I appreciate yeah. having me on and taking the time to have me on. It's been a great conversation and uh, hopefully we get to do it again for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be wonderful.